uh, in this building. Does it get hot and cold? It can get hot and cold, and the, the unique feature of it, which you'll notice it's sitting on the laboratory floor, and the holes, the three foot by three foot grid, extend into the box. So any test we can run out here on the lab floor, say maybe a, a smaller version of that pile test with the two actuators, the steel pile, we could fit inside of here. And we could run that test with the physical loading, pushing or pulling on it, by bolting it to the floor, through the floor of the chamber, putting a frame like this frame over top of the entire chamber, and lowering an actuator piston through some holes in the roof. So we can push and pull on these things and apply physical loads while we control the temperature, or while we spray water, or salt water, or chloride, or whatever else. Uh, we can run the temperature in here from, uh, the spec on it is 90 below zero Fahrenheit. We, we don't like to push that too much. We'll stay at you know, 60 below or 40 below, typically. Uh, on the plus side, we can get up to somewhere 180, 185 Fahrenheit on the top end. So that covers the full range of most of what you would see, and with, with few exceptions, in, at least in the civil engineering world. Uh, so the combined physical loading and thermal loading on a, on a fairly large scale, you get almost a 20-foot beam in this chamber. That's a pretty unique capability. There are only a handful of places, really, in the world that can load and thermally load at the same time. Why do they do the extremes? Is that the places that actually get that, or is right. it to know what it's it, kind it of could what be both. What the end of the curve looks like? It usually is for a place that would actually get that. So the Alaska Department of Transportation uh, likes this chamber quite a bit because they'll see water temperature or temperatures on, on piles in water that get close to negative 40 in some cases. They, they have design conditions that are in that range. Um, we've done, we can cycle temperature in here too, which is nice for environmental durability type tests. So I think the most recent example of that was a project for um, armoring bridges for the city of New York. So there's a, a big focus to armor stay cable bridges and prevent bombs and things. And when you armor a bridge, you inevitably end up with a pack of materials that alternate in stiffness. So you have a very soft layer and a very hard layer, and you have rubber and granite and steel and all these things. And that works great until the temperature starts changing. And all these things shift around at different rates, and then they separate and crack. So you can run that kind of a test in the chamber where you put maybe an armor panel in here, and you'd cycle it from 120 Fahrenheit to negative 20 Fahrenheit, and you'd run you know, about 50 of those cycles, and you'd see, okay, that equates to however many seasons of temperature cycling and how long expect this part to last. Yeah. Can you 